அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் திஸ் இஸ் சயின்ஸ் வித் சாம் அறிவியல் அறிவோம் நான் இந்த மே மாதத்தோட இந்தியா கிளம்புறதுக்கான திட்டம் அதற்கு முன்னதாக என்னால் முடிஞ்ச அளவுக்கு சில ஆய்வுக்கூடங்களை காட்டலாம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு சில நண்பர்கள்கிட்ட நான் அனுமதி கேட்டிருந்தேன் அந்த மாதிரி சில நண்பர்களை வந்து ஒத்துக்கிட்டு அவங்களுடைய ஆய்வுக்கூடத்தை எனக்கு சுற்றி காட்டினாங்க அதில் என்னால் முடிஞ்ச அளவு சில வீடியோ எடுத்திருக்கேன் நான் எப்பொழுதுமே என்னோடய மொபைல் கேமராவில் எடுத்ததுனால என்னால் முடிஞ்ச அளவு தான் சில விஷயங்கள் பார்த்துருக்கேன் அப்படி ஒரு வீடியோவை தான் இப்போ சமீபத்தில் எடுத்தேன் அது லேசர் பயன்படுத்தி நேனோ மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் எப்படி கிரியேட் பண்ணுறாங்கன்றது அது ஒரு அந்த விஞ்ஞானியாக அவர் காட்டுறாரு என்ன பிரச்சனை அப்படின்னா அந்த லேசர் ரன் பண்ணும்போது அவங்களால காட்ட முடியாது அதுக்கு வந்து அதுக்குள்ளே அந்த ஆய்வுக்கூடங்களுக்குள்ளே அளவு கிடையாது அதனால் அந்த சின்ன எக்ஸ்பெரிமெண்ட் மட்டும் அவங்க காட்டுறாங்க அது என்னன்றதை ஒரு முக்கியமான வீடியோ அந்த ஒரு விஞ்ஞானியோட நேர்காணல் மாதிரி அவர் என்ன அப்படி ஆராய்ச்சின்றதை அவர் சொல்லுவார் அந்த வீடியோவை நம்ம போய் பார்க்கலாம் அதே மாதிரி இன்னொரு பெரிய ஒரு ஆய்வுக்கூடத்துக்கு நான் போனேன் இன்னொரு விஞ்ஞானியாக அவர் காட்டினார் அது இன்னொரு வீடியோவில் என்னால் முடிஞ்சால் நான் அதையும் நான் ஷேர் பண்ணுறேன் வாங்க நம்ம லேசர் நேனோ மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் யூஸிங் லேசர்ஸ் அதை அந்த ஆய்வு கொடுத்தவங்க பார்க்கலாம் உங்களுக்கு சில பேருக்கு பயனுள்ளதாக இருக்கும் நான் நினைக்கிறேன் நன்றி ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இன்றைக்கி நம்ம வந்து ஒரு முக்கியமான ஒரு சயின்டிஸ்ட்டை பார்க்க போகிறோம் இவர் வந்து டாக்டர் நேத்தன் குட் ஃப்ரெண்ட் இவர் ஸ்காட்லாந்துக்காரர் இவர் ஒரு முக்கியமான ஆராய்ச்சி பண்ணுறாரு நேனோ மெட்டீரியல்ஸை லேசரை வச்சு ப்ரொடியூஸ் பண்ணுறாங்க அது என்னன்றத நம்ம அவர்கிட்டே கேட்கலாம் அவர் என்னன்றத அவர் யார் அப்படின்றத சொல்லிட்டு அவருடைய எக்ஸ்பெரிமெண்ட்டே நம்மகிட்ட காட்ட போகிறாரு அதை நம்ம உங்களுக்கு காட்டலாம்னு நினைக்கிறேன் நன்றி ஹட் which is an extension from my PhD for most of that time. Um, so it's taken me to... Like, yeah. Can you introduce about you, Nathan? Yeah, sure. So um, I did my um, PhD at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, where I also did my undergrad. So I lived in Scotland for about 10 years. But before that point, uh, my family moved around a lot, on average of about once every three years. Uh, because my father worked for the Foreign Service. And so um, my childhood was largely around the world, but I spent most of my time in Scotland. And during my PhD, I started to develop uh, this idea. Um, and I took that here to Highlays with me, uh, which is now what I've been working on for, I guess, the past four years now. Okay, so if I want to explain what the actual research that I'm doing is, um, the title would be Printing of... two-dimensional nanomaterials. And so when I'm saying printing, I do just mean positioning of uh, something at a specific location. So if you know what a 3D printer is, where you put a, uh, a small pixel of some material at a location, and then you continually build around that, where you can slowly stack each of these layers up, this is a um, method to do that for two-dimensional nanomaterials with a laser. So, uh, I feel I should explain what a two-dimensional nanomaterial is. So, if you want to imagine it, you don't need to imagine it, really. But um, if you take a bulk material, and then you slowly peel away all the different layers until you have something that is as thin as one atom, then that is what a two-dimensional nanomaterial is. So, they do have a very small thickness, um, but it is tiny in comparison to the overall width of the... nanomaterial. Uh, so moving those around is one of the biggest limiting factors for creating nanotechnology. Because if you want to think about your circuitry or transistor, you have three different components, um, and or many other different components really. But to do that with nanotechnology, you need to have a way of positioning those different materials. And that's what this does. So. Um, The way in which it works, really, is that I have a, um, a thin film of material, which is just going to be represented by this paper. This material is typically metal of some kind, and then it sits on top of a glass substrate. So the laser will be able to pass through that glass substrate. I then can place a 2D nanomaterial somewhere on, a, on this thin film. When I come through with my laser pulse, this um, just rapidly deforms or changes the shape of this Uh, material so that just ejects the nanomaterial to a different place so if you have this like two sheets you can print something from here to a specific position here um, across a small amount of space using a laser I explained earlier that the idea is that we're going to be printing uh, 2d nanomaterial from some thin film again just to bring this back into the reminder this is a thin film which is on a piece of glass this is essentially that so you can see that shiny metallic film on the top, uh, that, is what is the, that is what the laser is hitting as it goes through the back side. Um, so it comes through the back, hits that thin film, and that thin film is what deforms and transfers your 2D material, which 
as I told you, it's very, very thin, so it's near invisible. Um, we'll then be printing it to something like this. So this is a this is just a, a very clean piece of glass, which we've then put marker positions on it so that we know where we're printing to. Um, but the what I'm actually transferring from is quite an interesting like sample holder. So this is something that was done in our 3D printing labs, which is um, really handy to have something that is a bit flexible or grippy. It means that these can be held on with um, a minimum, I'm not going to be so aggressive with it, but they can be held on with a minimum, minimal amount of tape, and so that can help preserve the sample. Um, but yeah, they, these kind of sit within the device. It takes me a little time to put them it's, in. It's but fine, yeah. yeah. But, so they sit within the device, and then I can slowly make them uh, get closer and closer together until they're in contact. And because they're flexible, when they do make contact, even if they're at a slight angle, then they can flex into position so that they're actually um, as close together as possible despite being rigid material. So during the process, basically, they're touching each other? Um, for a part of the process, they're touching okay, each other. Uh -huh. So the typical thing that we would do would be to um, have them be separated by, in reality, they're separated by maybe 100 micrometers, so, so, so a very small separation. But uh, that would just allow them to move past each other, and then we can look at this with the camera, figure out specific 2D material that we actually want to, to, to print, rotate it around, um, and then we can also do the exact same with the receiver, so we can move this about to make sure that we are printing to a specific place that we want to print to, or yeah. other things like it. Um, yeah. And sell that as a printer to people that work in 2D nerve materials. Now, if I want to actually explain the, the device and how this works, um, this might not be so familiar if you're not used to a laser optical pathway, but there is a laser that is currently off that is coming along in this direction, and it is uh, bouncing up these mirrors before passing through to this point. At this position is really where I would have my 2D nanomaterial on some surface. So it's held within this holder. Um, and then you can fire the laser through your substrate, through that piece of glass, at that thin film, and print directly onto a receiver over here. And so some of the things that we've got attached to this that are really helpful outside of the laser is the imaging systems. So this here is actually just a microscope. So if you've never seen how a microscope works, this might be interesting, but you have an objective. So this is just a really high-powered zoom lens. Uh, then here you have a beam splitter. So all this does is it just allows some light to pass through in all directions, but there is some reflection. So here's a light source that allows some light to pass through, bounce back, and then go to the camera over here. And so that's essentially a microscope. Um, and then there are some other small additions to help us visualize the 2D materials better. But um, yeah, to a large extent, the way in which we do it is we uh, use a laser and uh, attach to a microscope and then um, fire a laser pulse at that material to print it in that 3D printing style. Uh, what we can do with a laser is we can specifically target one of these and then transfer this to the um, receiver substrate, uh, which, yeah, so this photo is not useful. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of gunk on the uh, material sometimes, and so those are the areas we want to avoid, and we then actually want to just try to get these uh, nice, clean ones, which is where they are that would be transferred. So the size of this is about 10, 10, 11 micrometers, something like that. So this was transferred as a single, single triangle um, from an initial uh, laser that we're using is a fiber laser from Pharos, uh, sorry, we're using a laser from light conversion, which is the Pharos laser. Uh, so we're just using the fundamental of that, so that comes out at about 1030 nanometers. Um, the lenses that we're using here are changeable, so this means that we can try and control the size of the laser spot so that we are ejecting nanomaterials 
down to a theoretical size of about two micrometers across. Uh, but the ones that we've had the most success and found use for are um, small 2D nanomaterials that are about 10, nanom 10 micrometers across. So um, again, I'm just going to point out that they are between 0 0.3 and 1 nanometer thick, and these are then quite a few micrometers across. So these are very, very thin, flexible, fragile materials that were uh, So did you mean 0 0.3 nanometer thick? Yeah, oh, wow. so okay. um, one atom, one atom is uh, ab about that much. So. The uses, by the way, if you're curious, the uses of these nanomaterials are from highly conductive, such as graphene, uh, to um, quite resistive, uh, resistive um, like uh, hexagonal boron nitride. So this is actually um, typically used to try and uh, preserve or, 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 or protect the other nanomaterial from any charges or any small perturbations from the surrounding atmosphere. And then you have uh, semiconductors like the tungsten disulfide that I mentioned earlier. And so those are largely all of your constituent components for building circuitry on a nano level where you have uh, conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. Um, so hopefully with the idea of being able to print this, you can then start to assemble those into nanostructures of those nanomaterials. Okay, Nathan, thank you for your time and explanation. A little exposure to water or something like that. Um, this is a super cheap solution. I mean, there are other options, but still, you can evacuate at least a large amount. It's a really interesting thing to do, but honestly...